This is the C-spine matrix. Matrix refers to moving in three-dimensional space, forward and backwards, side to side, as well as rotating left to right. The C-spine is a cervical spine. You've got seven vertebrae that make up the cervical spine in the neck. And they're meant to move in a whole bunch of different directions. But most of the time when we're moving through space, walking, running, even playing any athletic sports, a lot of times the head must stay fixated on the target or locked on the horizon. So the body will have this tendency to stay where it is no matter what your movement is. The head is always trying to stay kind of still, if you will, and allow the body to move below. So we're going to enhance that or just remind the body of what it's meant to do. And the way we're going to do that is imagining that maybe you have a, a book on the top of your head and you don't want that to fall off. If you really want to get creative, put a cup of water on there, but make sure there's towels nearby. You're just going to simply bend forward and lean back. Now as you do this motion, the goal is to keep the head nice and level. And what you'll find is as you go forward, the chin will move away from the chest. Now, if I froze my body in this position and straightened out, you'll see that my head is in quite a bit of extension. And so is my cervical spine. And when I lean back, trying to keep that head nice and level, the chin will come down closer to the chest. If I froze this position, you would see how much space I'm creating on the back side of my neck, driving my head and spine into flexion. So that's the first series of motions. Can you simply move your body forward and back and keep your head still? The next motion is side to side. Now you can pretend as if you're maybe cradling a child or an infant. Are you able to allow one shoulder to drop while the other one lifts, the rib cage tilts, and the head stays nice and level? And then as you go to the opposite side, can you accomplish the same thing? What you might find is by going to one side, the head travels with it instead of maintaining a level posture. But do the best you can in trying to maintain a level position of the head. Now as I go to one side, if I were to freeze in this position, I'm actually getting a really nice stretch off the side of the neck. And for that matter, if I go to the other side, the same thing occurs here. Instead of taking your hand and trying to crank on the neck and the head and trying to create length in that tissue, we can do so the same way just by keeping the head still and moving the body. Now the third motion is rotational. So are you able to rotate the torso to the left and to the right and yet keep the chin and the head facing forward? If I were to freeze in this position, I'd be getting a really good experience of length through the tissue on this side of my neck. And of course, rotating in the opposite direction will give me length on this side. So these movements, forward, back, side to side, and rotating left and right, is giving all the tissue surrounding the neck, between the skull and the shoulders, all this experience of lengthening and shortening in three-dimensional space by allowing the vertebrae to move the way it was designed. Try it out. Assess before, assess after. What was the outcome?